welcome to flight training. I'm your instructor, Captain Molina, but you can just call me Jess. This session, we'll get started with some basic controls. Sound good? First things first, let's get familiar with your surroundings. Don't worry. I've got the stick while you get your bearings. Out your side windows, you can see we have great visibility over Sedona today. This is Red Rock territory. Beautiful, isn't it? Before we 
go on, let's bring the plane back to straight up flight. Make sure your dashboard is aligned three to four inches below the horizon for a cruise attitude. Okay, the last thing we're gonna cover now is the throttle. If you have the need for speed, then the throttle's for you. Full control over the power output of the engine. Let's see what happens when you cut all the power. Surprise, surprise! Our altitude is decreasing. This might be a good time for a piloting PSA. Always keep an eye on your surroundings because nobody likes a low-flying duck. All right, let's go ahead and throttle back up. There you go. Speed is increasing, and as long as we maintain the same attitude, our altitude will keep climbing too. You're really getting the hang of your controls. Before long, you won't even need a co-pilot. Until then, if you want help with the radio or checklists or simply flying the plane, I'll be here. You can pass me the controls when you're ready to finish your session or keep flying. It is a great day after all. If you look outside, you can see the cockpit is just about four inches below the horizon line. We're flying straight with a decent rate of speed. This is the cruise attitude. Let's see how it reads on your instruments. Take a look at the attitude indicator. As the name implies, it shows your current attitude. The white line is the horizon with the sky above and the ground below. That orange element in the middle aligned with the horizon, that's your plane. Just like we saw outside, our current attitude reads pretty much straight and level. Okay, now let's see how much power the engine's generating. Check your tachometer. Looks like we're pushing around 2300 revolutions per minute. Combined, attitude and engine RPMs translate to aircraft performance. Which leads us to your airspeed indicator. Now, last but not least, check your altimeter. To figure out your altitude, you always want to read the small needle first. 
That's how many thousands of feet up you are. Then on to the big needle for the hundreds. With our current attitude and power output, we're holding a speed of 90 knots and a stable altitude of 6,000 feet. But that's about to change. Take the stick when you're ready. Pull back slightly on the yoke to raise the nose just above the horizon line. About two inches. Make sure you don't pitch up too much, or the angle will be too steep to create lift. And without enough lift, we'll stall. All right, go full throttle and start climbing. Welcome to the climb attitude. See how it shows up on your attitude indicator and tachometer? According to your altimeter, we're gaining altitude. But we're losing airspeed even at full throttle, proving you can't avoid basic physics while making a climb. Okay, before we go on, let's get back to a cruise attitude. Ease up on the yoke and aim your nose just below the horizon. Then throttle back down to 2300 RPMs. Control now. 
There's an old saying I like, a mile of road will take you a mile, a mile of runway will take you anywhere. Taking off isn't hard, but there are a few key points to remember. First, we always take off into the wind, which won't be an issue on a calm day like today. Second, before we enter a runway, we always make sure it's clear. Everything looks good, no cross traffic. Go ahead and taxi into position. The rudder pedals should make steering the plane pretty easy. Let's do this. Apply full power and I'll walk you through the takeoff as we go. Use your rudders to stay on the center line and keep pushing power until you reach 55 knots. Good. Now gently pull back on the yoke. Line up the top of your instrument panel so it's a couple inches above the horizon. That'll pitch us up and set a good climb attitude. And we're airborne. Focus on flying straight. Use your rudders to keep the runway heading of 210 degrees. Maintain 75 knots and we'll reach our target altitude of 5,500 feet in no time. Feet, a nice safe altitude for part two of our lesson. Straight and level flight. First step here is adjusting our attitude.
max power. To stay level at our target altitude, let's start by easing the throttle back to 1800 RPMs. You probably noticed, to maintain altitude, you need to pitch the nose up. You could just keep pulling on the yoke to hold steady, but that's not really a precise means of control. Probably better to adjust your trim wheel until you don't need to push or pull on the yoke. Drag the trim down when you need to set the nose up. Drag it up to set the nose down. Try adding trim to keep us at 5,500 feet without increasing throttle. If you feel our pitch slipping and need to get back to the proper attitude, don't worry. Just pull on the yoke, then dial in the right trim.
you adjust the trim, you make rough changes at first to remove pressure on the yoke. Then small adjustments to find the perfect setting to keep your desired attitude. That's the key to straight and level flight. It saves you from constantly pushing or pulling on the yoke. And that gives you more time to enjoy the ride. If you want more practice using the trim, go for it. Whenever you're ready to pass the controls, I'll be here. Okay, I have control. Hope you enjoyed the lesson. My first instructor used to say, the best part of flying is landing in one piece. The man was a terminal pessimist, but he wasn't wrong. Today, you're in charge of bringing us in for a safe landing. We've got clearance for a straight-in approach, so we don't have to complete the standard traffic pattern. And I've already set us up in landing configuration, at 65 knots with 10 degrees of flaps and idle power. We're on the glide slope now. Maintain speed around 65 knots, change your pitch if you need to, and keep your aim point on the runway number. When you're targeting the runway number, you want to keep it steady in your sights. If it looks like the number is moving up in your windscreen, you're coming in low. You'll need to add a bit more throttle to get back on the slope. If it looks like the number is moving down in your windscreen, well, then you're too high. You'll need to add flaps to increase your rate of descent, but you'll also need to push forward and trim to change your attitude and maintain the same speed. on the runway threshold. When you're 10 feet above the runway, it's time to flare. Once we pass the threshold, shift your aim point to the end of the runway. Then, pull back slightly on the yoke to aim the nose just above it. Okay, we're past the threshold. Start the flare. My first instructor used to say, the best part of flying is landing in one piece. The man was a terminal pessimist, but he wasn't wrong. Today, you're in charge of bringing us in for a safe landing. We've got clearance for a straight-in approach, so we don't have to complete the standard traffic pattern. And I've already set us up in landing configuration, at 65 knots with 10 degrees of flaps and idle power. We're on the glide slope now. Maintain speed around 65 knots, change your pitch if you need to, and keep your aim point on the runway number. When you're targeting the runway number, you want to keep it steady in your sights. If it looks like the number is moving up in your windscreen, you're coming in low. You'll need to add a bit more throttle to get back on the slope. If it looks like the number is moving down in your windscreen, well, then you're too high. You'll need to add flaps to increase...
my first instructor used to say, the best part of flying is landing in one piece. The man was a terminal pessimist, but he wasn't wrong. Today, you're in charge of bringing us in for a safe landing. We've got clearance for a straight-in approach, so we don't have to complete the standard traffic pattern. And I've already set us up in landing configuration, at 65 knots with 10 degrees of flaps and idle power. We're on the glide slope now. Maintain speed around 65 knots, change your pitch if you need to, and keep your aim point on the runway number. When you're targeting the runway number, you want to keep it steady in your sights. If it looks like the number's moving up in your windscreen, you're coming in low. You'll need to add a bit more throttle to get back on the slope. If it looks like the number's moving down in your windscreen, well, then you're too high. You'll need to add flaps to increase your rate of descent, but you'll also need to push forward and trim to change your attitude and maintain the same speed. on the runway threshold. When you're 10 feet above the runway, it's time to flare. Once we pass the threshold, shift your aim point to the end of the runway. Then, pull back slightly on the yoke to aim the nose just above it. Okay, we're past the threshold, start the flare. Keep pulling back slowly. Let the plane settle onto the runway. Don't push it down, but don't let it start climbing. Nice. Now apply the brakes to slow us down and bring the plane to a stop. Great job. As they say, any landing you can walk away from is a good landing. But if you can use the plane the next day, it's outstanding. Landings can be hard, even for seasoned pilots. Trust me, don't hesitate to practice. After all, that's what we're here for, right?